The mission of LIGO is to actually search for gravitational waves from cataclysmic astrophysical events, the most energetic and violent events in the universe. So if you can learn things about supernova, about colliding black holes, colliding neutron stars, even the Big Bang, the birth of the universe itself, using gravitational waves in ways that no other type of astronomy can actually see. When you think of observatories, you think of telescopes, someone looking through a telescope out into space, well, our instrument is underground. So we mostly are listening observatory in, in a sense. We are trying to measure something on Earth that's never been measured before. LIGO is an acronym. It stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. And what we do here is we use high precision interferometry, laser interferometry, to try and search for gravitational waves that were predicted by Albert Einstein almost 100 years ago, and actually in 1916. Right? The laser actually is shot out into an interferometer, which is basically a beam splitter, with, uh, which allows the light to be split into two equal powers. One arm of the, the interferometer sends the light out two and a half miles, four kilometers. The other arm sends it also out the same distance. The light bounces around, around about 200 times, comes back, recombines, all right? And in that recombination, if there's a gravitational wave, what it will do is it will stretch and compress the arms of the interferometer in a, in a diametrically opposed way. So when a gravitational wave passes over the Earth, this is where it's going to be seen. It will pass through, it will change the interference pattern due to this modulation of space-time, and it will be detected right here. Advanced LIGO is a new kind of interferometer. It's an upgraded interferometer. It's a factor of 10 more sensitive than initial LIGO. It took us a long time to do this upgrade. Essentially, we just took out everything from the vacuum system and installed new things that also we were not as familiar with. It was new. Um, and so I think we're up and coming and we're moving fast right now. Certain things in the environment will, will interfere in that, in that signal. So we have to pay attention to certain frequencies that, that may affect um, the, the lasers such as seismic activity due to earthquakes, ocean waves, human activity, stuff like that. There are many universities involved in the collaboration sending their students and postdocs to the, to the observatories. So we are educating a generation. And this is an, an amazing experiment in the sense that there is astrophysics, which is what we want to detect. There is technology, there is engineering in putting it all together. There's detective work in finding out what works and what doesn't and why it doesn't work. And that's the best education that, that students can have. And actually as we sit here, you're sitting in a science and education center. And that science and education center actually gets students from the kindergarten through 12th grade level excited about LIGO. So we do a lot of education, not just about LIGO, but about science in general. Wow. Welcome to the LIGO Science Education Center. We see about 15,000 people, 10,000 here on site and another 5,000 people off site. We actually have a science center here so it relates to um, experiences that people can grab onto and, and do with their hands. It's really about inspiring the scientists in every individual. Actually this particular location is the LIGO Livingston Observatory. We have a sister observatory in Hanford, Washington, and we're actually in the process of building a third interferometer that will go in India. So our hope is that we'll be building an interferometer in India that will be operational probably in about seven or eight years of 2022. The more observatories you have around the world, um, uh, the more you're able to figure out where the source was in the sky. Um, and that's done with timing. So because gravitational waves uh, travel at the speed of light, um, you can figure out um, by when, it, when the signal arrives at the different observatories, um, where it could have come from in the sky. I say our most research is we are re refining things that we already know. Here we, we're branching out into the unknown. You know, so the benefits that we're gonna receive is, is, is quite overwhelming. So um, it's, it's an honor to work here at LIGO. It's amazing. There are these black holes colliding, these black holes being born from neutron stars and then producing distortions of the space-time that travel here. And here we detect those distortions with lasers going back and forth between mirrors. I think cool things are coming in the next year or two.
And that's the challenge of this business, is, is to take a signal that's so small, so feeble, and, and basically sift it out of a data stream, all right, when it ends up on the photodiode that sits inside that, uh, you know, that vacuum system there, and, and vet it to the level that we can claim with high confidence that it truly is a gravitational wave signal. That will be a great day for, for everybody who works in this field. It really will. Thank you.